Consulting organization McKinsey is regularly evaluating Germany's energy transition policy um, and the progress with that. Um, and it just recently published another evaluation. So they do this since 2012. And the summary says that most of the goals of the energy transition policy will be missed and that supply security will not be guaranteed after shutdown of nuclear and coal power, which is supposed to happen in the 2020s, 2030 realm. Uh, and so that's, that's, of course, not news for power listeners, but it's important to understand that even these formal goals will not be reached that there's already an issue with uh, German energy supply, and particularly power supply. And if current trends uh, uh, prevail in emission reduction, the 2020 milestone will only be reached eight years later, according to McKinsey. Um, and the current favorable weather for solar and wind has led to a significant reduction for 2019 in the power sector, although significant imports of power had to happen to, to make that happen. Uh, but in the transport and industry, uh, the emissions actually increased in the German economy. So we see here that talking about wind and solar, you know, even if they could be made very successful, they only solve part of the problem with uh, getting off fossil fuels, which is the, go the stated goal of the energy transition in Germany, of course. Um, and over the next 10 years, over 40% of firm capacity in the power sector will be retired, and this will be mostly coal and nuclear. And without additional measures, uh, McKinsey says supply uh, security could be in danger. Um, and their recommendation then is, and <laughs> you know, it's almost hilarious if it wasn't that serious, is that additional renewables and what they call flexible capacity, which of course means natural gas power, uh, and some mothballed capacity uh, should be kept as a reserve. And, and these are the things that, that Germany needs to uh, focus on to make this energy transition successful. And by successful, they of course always mean like achieving the goals that the German government has set, not, you know, having a secure energy supply. Uh, and so in addition, some additional transmission lines uh, need to come online. And the transmission bottleneck is actually a big issue here in Germany. Uh, if that's not resolved, uh, the 2020 milestones might, not, might only be reached in the late 2030, so even a decade later um, uh, than they are by current trends. And uh, so you can imagine this uh, not in my backyard attitude uh, being a real obstacle to building more and more transmission lines to get the intermittent power from solar and, and wind that is generated somewhere, you know, in the North Sea and maybe needed in Munich in, the su in southern Germany. Uh, you need a lot of uh, infrastructure capacity to bring that from A to B. And that, that is way behind of schedule. Uh, they also have something positive to say about uh, goal achieving. So they say there's a quote unquote stable renewable uh, energy jobs, which only slightly declined. And I want to remind everyone that this was, you know, in America it's supposed to be, but also in Germany it's supposed to be the big job growth machine, right? So this is a job of the future and, and only slightly declined. So that's, that's a success, according to McKinsey. Um, and the industrial uh, industry power rates uh, are only 6.2% above the European average, down from 14% above EU average in 2012. And the residential power prices, of course, continue to rise because that's where the brunt of the cost will be paid for. Um, and renewable energy, which also includes hydro and biomass and so on, is about... 37% of power generation and might continue to rise. Uh, power generation, of course, is different than consumption, but that's uh, the data we, we get in the official uh, databases. But um, we will see by 2023 when the remaining nuclear capacity is banned in Germany, according to a current law, uh, the country will probably become a net importer of power. 
And uh, in the meantime, the government just this uh, last week announced that it will spend another 40 billion euros, uh, which is slightly more in, in US dollars, um, over the next four years on climate policies to cut the greenhouse gas emissions by 55% over the, uh, the 1990 levels by 2030. And one point that's very important, they always take this 1990 uh, starting point in the statistics. And uh, that is because the reunification of Eastern and Western Germany led to a dismantling of the Eastern German heavy industry, which was uh, quite a big emitter, of course. And so naturally, by the collapse of that Soviet style economy, uh, you get a lot of emission reductions, right? So that's, that's already cheating. Um, so a lot of people outside Germany don't, don't know this context, but they always take this 1990 level um, as, a, as a starting point, because that's when, when the Eastern German economy still was uh, putting out some heavy emissions. And then after that, it collapsed in the 1990s. Um, yeah, so that, that's, uh, that just shows that these climate commitments are black hole for government spending, right? Because Germany will just continue every few years to reevaluate and say, oh, we need to spend more money on these goals. And then they will likely not achieve them as long as people are free to actually use more and more energy. Because as long as Germans will get wealthier, uh, we want to consume more resources. We want to, you know, live a better life and longer and happier life. And this requires a lot of energy. This requires a lot of resources and, and products and, and uh, being productive. And that requires a lot of energy. And much of that energy and most of that energy in Germany still comes from fossil fuels. And one of the things that's not covered by this evaluation, by the way, is uh, the outsourcing of emissions in terms of imported products. So something that happens, so, uh, you know, you might imagine a country like America that has a shale revolution going on with cheap natural gas as feedstock for manufacturing and also uh, low energy prices as a result of that that draws a lot of the industrial capacity from a country that, like Germany that is just punishing with taxes and, and high wages uh, and, th and so on, uh, um, the industry sector, industrial sector. And so what happens, and if the German economy grows, is we are going to import more and more stuff from places like Southeast Asia, right? And so these products that we import will, of course, embody a lot of uh, CO2 emissions. Yeah. You know, the manufacturing in China will, you know, use coal power. And these are emissions for the same product that previously was maybe manufactured somewhere in Europe or even in Germany. And this is not accounted for. So it could well be that Germany is not actually uh, on net reducing its emissions. Maybe it's even increasing its emissions, right? Uh, by consuming more and more stuff that requires CO2 emissions. But we won't know because this accounting is, uh, I would say, a bit rigged in favor of uh, showing too rosy a picture. Even so, I would really like to hear, you know, from the all of these supporters of the Green New Deal and its variants, like, explain why you think you're going to do better than Germany. Like, if you're saying, oh, 10 years, it will remake the economy, will be 100% renewable, it's like, what reason do you have to think that you're actually going to be able to do better than this, you know, advanced economy that's really put forward a lot of effort to, uh, I mean, I hate to even phrase it this way, but wean itself off of fossil fuels. And it, it would be interesting to hear, you know, what they had to say in that front. 